My husband and I lived in an old mill house that was converted into about three stories of flats. We lived in the attic conversion and it was easily my favourite flat in the world. Downstairs, we had the most ridiculously stereotyped Scottish junkies. They were constantly getting high. They had four kids in one tiny bedroom flat and they were abusive towards each other, constantly shouting and screaming, banging on walls and all that kind of stuff. They would wake us up at about three in the morning, having loud ass parties with their junkie friends. One night, I finished a stock take quite late at work and didn't get home until around 4am. I walked up the stairs and as I passed their door, I heard the worst noise in the world. As someone that was then training to be a teacher, this honestly had me crying like a baby. I heard a little girl screaming, literally screaming for her dad to stop hurting her. She was crying and begging and it absolutely tore me apart. I called the police, which we had done before for noise reasons, and told them that it sounded like a small child was being beaten and raped. And if they didn't get here within the next 10 minutes, my husband and I would go down and deal with it ourselves. Three cars, a riot van and social workers showed up in about five minutes. I was outside waiting for them. The scum bastard was raping his three-year-old daughter whilst his friends got high and watched. The social worker let me hug their little girl whilst they got everyone situated. She was tiny. This little tiny bundle wrapped up in a blanket sobbing in my lap. It ruined me. I couldn't sleep properly for months. They were arrested and their kids were sent away. I never knew what happened after that and they never came back. We left six months later. My neighbour downstairs was always kind of crazy. He would pound on the door in the middle of the night to try and pay rent as my mother worked in the leasing office. Just odd stuff like that. But this guy was pretty messed up. Well one day, my mum picked me up from grade school and told me that we were going to go to counselling because she had something to tell me. We get to her therapist and she says, Listen, our neighbour downstairs mutilated himself and walked around the building. I later found out that he had cut off his dick and balls, stuck his dick in his own mouth and held his balls in his hands and walked around the building until someone called the police. I stayed up all night watching Hazmat clean up from my bedroom window. My mum had to survey the apartment for damages the next day because she worked in a complex. Why do you think we had to go to counselling? I had some truly messed up neighbours growing up in Russia. My building still has a few alcoholics who leave and break booze bottles everywhere and piss inside the building. But one man who lived on my floor was infamous in our neighbourhood. This guy lived with his mother who ironically was the building's janitor although she was nearly fired several times for shirking off her duties. This woman made moonshine in her bathtub, which often stank her neighbour's flats. Her kid began sampling the moonshine early on and was a full-blown alcoholic and juvenile delinquent by the age of 16. He soon moved on to heroin and began beating his mother for her tiny janitor's salary for drug money. Once, he nearly put her in a coma because she refused to press charges or kick him out. He broke into his neighbour's flat once for some drug money and went to jail for about two weeks. We decided to get an extra door for our side of the floor after that. The junkie was a metal grunge fan who wrote band names and Nirvana quotes all over the wall to our already dingy building. Like all other drug addicts and alcoholics, 
This guy pissed absolutely everywhere in the building, even in his own flat. The downstairs neighbours actually had severe water damage because of his piss, and his flat was so foul that the next residents had to gut it completely. This junkie though, took it to the next level, and shat all over our floor hallways when his mother wouldn't let him in one night. My grandma and the building's other residents demanded for years that this individual be removed from the building to no avail. His own mother, who he physically abused, defended her precious son at every turn and refused to kick him out or even send him to rehab. Eventually, they fell behind on their utility bills and they had to relocate to a smaller flat somewhere else in town. They lived there for maybe a year until rumour has it the junkie killed his mother. No one I know actually knows what happened, but the junkie was taken away by cops when his mother died and was never seen or heard from again. My neighbours in this shitty apartment I moved into after I moved out of my parents' place were hoarders to the extreme, as well as alcoholics. We started getting roaches in our apartment about two months after they moved in. And then the mice came. And then the rats. About once a month, we would have to call 911 on them. Because we would find one of them passed out in the parking lot, or on the doorstep, or on the stairs. They came over and asked if it was us who kept calling 911. Then they cussed us out because they didn't have insurance and had to take out numerous payday loans in order to cover the ambulance costs. We broke our lease and moved out after someone took a shit on our welcome mat. I was living next to a foster home that had a ton of boys living in it and everything was fine until my mum found out that she had allergies to our cats, Rat and Trixie. So we let them outside and everything was fine for about six months. I would go outside every morning, call their names, feed them, and spend some time with them before heading off to school. Then one day, my cat, Rat, doesn't show up after calling for her, but Trixie does. I don't think too much of it though. She's probably out doing cat things, and I go to my aunt's house for the weekend to study with my cousin. When I come back home, there's still no sign of Rat. I start calling her name around the neighbourhood and asking if anyone has seen her. Nope, no sign of her. Meanwhile, Trixie is suffering from seizures all of a sudden. We get them under control and keep her inside to keep an eye on her because she was still very lethargic. Fast forward about two weeks and it was either going to be one of two things. Either someone had accidentally run her over or someone had taken a liking to her and kept her for themselves, as she was a super smart and lovable cat. Cue the knock at the door. My dad opens the door with a young boy holding a plastic bag. And you guessed it, Rat was inside of it. He said that she was in their hedges and that he had a feeling he knew what happened to her. They had gotten a new foster kid, who he said wasn't right in the head and had a gut feeling that he had something to do with it. My dad thanked the kid and went over to talk to the head of the household about it as he had also noticed someone accidentally throw a fish over the fence a few days ago and our dogs were almost going to go for it. Apparently that kid had been causing a lot of trouble for them and was known to poison animals. Sadly Trixie didn't make it out either bastard kid. I live in an apartment. This lady lived on the third floor and she must have let her cats piss everywhere because the entire building reeked like cat piss. I mean reeked, seriously. The smell entered my apartment frequently and when I passed her in the hallway I would have to hold my breath because she smelt so bad. I dealt with this for two years with multiple complaints to the office until I eventually called animal control. 
it turns out she had 30 cats in her apartment. The smell was so bad that on a windy day, people from other buildings within the complex could smell it. Sometimes it would smell like the cat was pissing in my own apartment. Animal control took all of her cats away. She was evicted shortly after that. I know from talking to other neighbours that this had been going on for over five years before I had even moved there. But they had a hard time evicting her because she was section eight. Although I'm sure the apartment manager was very incompetent as well. The maintenance guys had to put on a mask and rip the carpet up and seal the wood under it amongst many other things they had to do with that apartment to make it even barely livable for other renters. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. Geez, some people have the worst of luck when it comes to neighbours. Have any of you guys had any experiences with terrible neighbours? Why not share them in the comment section below? And also, thank you to all of you guys we just hit 4,000 subscribers, which is outstanding. So thank you for getting me here, guys. I really appreciate it. When we hit 5,000 subs, I'm going to run a competition. So keep an eye out. It's going to be fun and require your involvement. As always, something that I would profoundly appreciate is if you could share and like this video, as it really, really helps me out. Go on. Remember, you can email me your creepy experience to my email which can be found in the description below but please remember to give me your consent and don't forget to follow me on twitter and instagram oh and if you have netflix go watch stranger things seriously it is so good i absolutely loved it and if you've already seen it i'd love to hear what you thought of it but honestly if you can watch it you really should it's brilliant but anyway for now guys i'm gonna sign off stay awesome and I'll see you in the next one. He would sleepwalk constantly and showed up right next to my bed and stare at me until I woke up and promptly shat myself. One night, I heard my front door open and close. Since it was 4am, I went to check it out. I opened the door and found my brother at the far end of the yard, in the snow, only in his underwear, staring right at me. He then waved very slowly. Those shivers were not from the cold. <laughs>